Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, we take a look back at some of our favorite stories from this season, starting off at an amazing Big Cat Conservation Center. And this young girl made it her mission to save one of the panthers there. And we'll meet some bull masters and why their owners can't get enough of this big breed. That's the formula. Hello and welcome to Animal Outtakes. I'm Marsha Panucci and this is my best friend, Zeus. This is our fourth season of Animal Outtakes and this season we've had some wild adventures and we met some amazing animals and people that take care of them. This week we thought it would be fun to take a look back at some of our favorite stories. One place we visited this season and we fell in love with was called Panther Ridge a conservation center focusing mainly on big cats. He can be totally resting out in the field when he sees me coming. It's, oh, maybe mom has something for me. I think I've wanted to do this since I was three years old. I've had a lifelong love of animals. And in the early 90s, I Really, I, it may have been a midlife crisis, but whatever it was, I went through uh, all of the procedures to get a permit to have a small exotic cat uh, as a personal pet. And I must say, in retrospect, for 99% of people on earth, this is not a good idea. They are too labor intensive, too time intensive. Time, labor, and love, Judy persevered. And from that very first animal, her life would be forever changed. This is an unbelievable acrobat of a cat. I just have evolved into this extreme love of cats. And since I first started uh, with my own cat, uh, I have now, over these past 15, 20 years, been watching what's going on in the world. And I see that these cats are all in danger. So the thrust of Panther Ridge Conservation Center really is getting more into the conservation aspect of it and trying to, through our educational tours and whatever method we can, put out to the world that these are treasures that we can't lose. As a 501c3, which is a not-for-profit, how do you exist other than your own private funds? We exist on revenue from tours we do get some grants. We have a core group of supporters who will become uh, grand benefactors of the cats, which really helps to support each individual one on a yearly basis. And uh, we're getting into some grant writing. Big cats mean big expenses. And I wondered how much it cost in a year to keep a cat healthy and happy. Somewhere between five and eight thousand dollars and I may be a little conservative on those numbers because it's not only the food the veterinary care the supplements all of the enrichment items that are used on a daily basis but it's also maintenance which is a huge part of taking care of our enclosures making sure they're up to snuff and are first rate We'd like to talk about the food because these cats need to eat. <laughs> they certainly do. So what is their average diet? They usually eat a diet of beef, uh, boneless, skinless turkey thigh. <laughs> uh, we throw a few chicken necks in for crunch, which also helps scale their teeth. Uh, they get vitamins, minerals, uh, whole prey supplementation. So every cat will get size appropriate whole prey uh, that comes frozen and we distribute it uh, every day to every cat. Um, and then there are the occasional treats like going to Publix and buying a carriage full of beef back rib bones. <laughs> and that is unanimously everyone's favorite. That may be the case. But I can see that Judy is their favorite human. Oh, 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 goodness, goodness, what's going on? 
they really know you. They do know me, but I have been the consistency in their life, some of them for 14, 15, 18 years. And they know who they can depend on. I must say that I have such a talented group working with me now that they are really getting to know those people as well. And I'm able to delegate the joy. And there's no shortage of joy at Panther Ridge Conservation Center. If you'd like to receive and spread joy, visit them at pantherridge.org to find out how you can get involved to preserve and protect these big cats. We have featured many kids who are making a difference in the lives of animals, but we haven't met one who started so young. It was at Panther Ridge where we first were introduced to Audrey, a very special girl with a big cause and an equally big heart. And he, I'm very excited that he is going to start a course of medication very shortly. I don't know many typical 10-year-olds willing to give their time and energy to fundraising, but Audrey Thompson is anything but typical. Well, my mom, she found an article in the newspaper about Panther Ridge, and they just went through a panther who had cancer, and they needed money for her to help her get through her cancer. So I was like, oh, how about I donate some money? So then I started doing fundraisers for them, and I, sell, I sold lollipops, and I raised money then for my birthday. Instead of asking for gifts, I asked for donations, and I donated here. Audrey started raising money for Panther Ridge when she was just seven years old. And that first panther held a special connection for her. Because she had the same exact name as me, and I just felt really bad for her. So I was, and they needed help, and I love animals so much. So I was like, oh, it, it would be really helpful for me to donate money to them. This experience has not only been helpful to the animals at Panther Ridge, it has set the course for Audrey's future. Well, when I'm older, I want to own my own sanctuary like Miss Judy. I want to have all types of animals there. And I want to take in ones that are hurt or sick and can't go back into the wild and help them out. You just never know how you might affect the life of a child. And Miss Judy has been quite an inspiration to Audrey. Well, she inspires me because she has all these animals and she takes care of them and she shows me that one person can take care of all these animals and really make a difference. And there's no doubt in my mind that Audrey will continue to make her own mark in animal rescue. I'm going to try my best. This story is a reminder to us all that you're never too old or too young to make a difference. If you know a kid like Audrey who is impacting the lives of animals, we would love to hear about them. Visit us on Facebook at Animal Outtakes TV. Our next guest kept me put in my chair. Literally, I wasn't able to move. And believe me, I was really trying. Stay with us. Crested Caracara is listed in Florida as threatened. Their numbers have declined due to many factors, including illegal hunting. Help support efforts to eliminate the threat of illegal hunting, not just for birds of prey, such as the Caracara, but for all wildlife. Always alert authorities if you see people hunting illegally, or if you see wildlife parts, such as feathers, being sold illegally. For thousands of years, we've been humans' best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. 
millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. From riding on camels to playing with jaguar cubs, we've had some fun encounters. But one that stands out for me this season was when I got up close, really close, to a giant anaconda. Now, while I do love and appreciate all animals, Snakes have always given me, well, shall we say, the heebie-jeebies. Can you really blame me? Take a look. Andrew, we're here in beautiful Dade City, Florida, at your marvelous sanctuary. Thank you. How did you get this started? Uh, really, I got started probably about 10 years ago with my wife. Um, I met her through her brother, we were friends, and then uh, we both had a passion for animals and that passion developed into hanging out all the time, we work with animals, and then we ended up getting married and building this ourselves. But when you talk animals, we're not talking dogs and cats. No, we, uh, we focus mostly on exotic animals. We're, uh, we're a company that works with educating people on animals, but we're also a sanctuary, so we take in unwanted pets or, or people that have had exotic animals that shouldn't have them. At any point in time, Wild Transport Sanctuary has between 50 and 100 animals. But today, I'm interested in one of the most misunderstood animals, or reptiles to be exact. And what about snakes? We do love our snakes. We do. Um, we, that's one of the things that we, we do work with a lot is snakes, and we help educate people on snakes. Because snakes really do have a bad reputation. Um, and it seems like the bigger they get, the scarier they are. So we like to inform people that not every snake is a bad snake. Most actually all snakes are, are good snakes. They're here for a purpose. So um, we actually have a really cool snake that we're going to show you here in a second. Really? That, uh, that really has a scary reputation. <laughs> and uh, she's actually not that bad. But she's huge. She oh is. She's pretty big. Oh my goodness. She is huge. Oh my heavens. Look at that. Oh, so, yes. Oh, oh, and she's heavy. She is oh, heavy. Oh, she's heavy. Hey, we got it. There we go. Oh, look. Oh, my goodness. So uh, this uh, is... Uh, what do you do? Do you pet them? Um, <laughs> usually you just support them and make them feel comfortable. Yes, well, she's coming around the bend she's here. She's going to check you out. Annie, Andrew's green anaconda, is a beautiful example of the largest species of snake in the world. They are found in South America and can be more than 20 feet long and over 500 pounds. And Annie has a knack of, well, uh, shall we say, connecting people. Now I'm going to drop her. She's coming right off of my knees yep. here. She's going to, so, uh, yeah. and, she, <laughs> and she's moving the whole she chair. She really brings people close together. Yes, you know? she does. <laughs> yes, she does. Uh, she'd be great on a first date. That's right. She's a real icebreaker. <laughs> yes. Um, Although not a great life partner, anacondas live about 10 years but may exceed 30 years. Females are typically larger than males and have been known to eat their smaller mating partners in order to last through the seven-month fast associated with their pregnancy. However, this is not the case with Annie. She, um, she feeds mostly on rabbits. We get frozen thawed rabbits. Um, mm -hmm. So they're pre-killed and they come in frozen and she'll eat that. That's her main diet is those. And then she does vary from time to time to um, pigs and things like that as well. Pigs? Yep. So she can eat a she whole pig? She can take about a 20 pound pig. But anacondas have a slow metabolism. So if Annie eats a pig, she may not eat again for three to four weeks. Now if you think an anaconda may make a great pet, think again. These are illegal to own in Florida, correct? That's correct. They are illegal to have as a pet. Because they are so large, green anacondas have few natural predators. Their biggest threat are humans because of misguided fears or loss of habitat. Well, Andrew, we thank you. And Annie, we thank you too. Coming up next, this family has not one, but four big dog babies to love.
Pets can give you love and companionship, but one memorable family we met up with received that from not one, but four gentle giants. They too will steal your hearts faster than they can clear their food dish. This is, over here's Lola, who's the oldest. She's eight years old. She was born in Florida. And this is Lola's sister, who's seven, and this is Jasmine. She was also born in Florida. They're a year apart. This is Willow. She, say hey. Willow is five years old. She was born in Virginia. And this is Bronson the baby, he's three. And he was born in South Carolina. Okay. <laughs> They're gentle giants. They're very, very easy going dogs. Very stubborn too, because they're... Um, half bulldog and half mastiff. And so the block headedness comes from the bulldog. <laughs> and the size and the temperament pretty much comes from the master. Give me five. Give me five. <gasps> I had a little health uh, problems a couple years back, and Beth thought I should get a dog. So we got Lola, and Lola's sp very special to me because she helped me through that hard time. She, she basically rehabilitated him. They're your best friend. They're they know they're so intuitive they know when you need to be just just need to have somebody near you they know when they can be funny with you they're really they they're just really uh completely devoted unconditionally every time one got out of the puppy stage i missed it and he wanted only one i'm the one that wanted to keep going and they do sleep up on the bed and actually they give us plenty of room they, we lay down and then they inch in. And they're very quiet and they don't bark. But usually once a day they have like their little meeting, little pack meeting, where uh, Bronson is the leader of the pack and he'll, he'll start this little bark and all four of them will start howling. And uh, it's something to hear. They take a nap to prepare to take a nap for the nap that they're gonna take. <laughs> it's taught me about true, true love and true friendship, and they don't care what you look like. They don't care if you're sad or if you're happy. They're always there, and it makes me wanna be a better person, being around them. <laughs> no, oh, there we go. Those were some very special dogs and very dedicated owners as well. Coming up next, we've learned throughout the years that scripting animals doesn't usually work. They have a mind of their own. Bloopers are next. Perfect. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm peeing in my pants, but everything is perfect. Mm -hmm. right? For thousands of years, we've been human's best friend. You've been through a lot and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. People have asked me what it'll cost to restore all the corals back the way they remember. But I have to ask them, what will it cost if we don't do anything?
Animal Outtakes is produced by Dante's Den Foundation, a nonprofit group dedicated to creating the best life for dogs. If you would like to learn more about Dante's Den, donate or volunteer, visit our website, dantesden.org. Thanks for watching some of our favorite encounters from this season of Animal Outtakes. Zeus and I will be back here again next week with even more animals and some wild adventures. But before we say goodbye, let's have another laugh at the expense of some funny animals. Well, at the expense <laughs> of one host too. And Zeus, I think you're in this one. Yeah. There we go. Well, there's the answer to that question. <laughs> Oh, I hope she got You know, that brings up a very, very good, very good is she on my. <laughs> I didn't expect her there. <laughs> um... She wants my attention. She, yeah. She's pulling my hand in with her foot. Yes. Yeah. See? Whoa, whoa, whoa that's whoa, all right, sorry, right. sorry. Right. <laughs> I think he is doing the pee pee dance. Yeah, actually. well, I think so too. <laughs> a little bit. He's about to. It's good luck when they pee on you. you oh, it's, wonderful. It's, 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 it's fresh, huh? yeah, yeah, it's fresh Don't squeeze. Tell you different. That's where Gatorade comes from. Yep. Oh, yeah. Fresh squeeze Gatorade, straight <laughs> from the source. Power. Really? Yeah. Woo. So, okay, now sit, there we go. Let's go as fast as we can. <clears throat> We're recovering at Save Our Seabirds, but he needed to find a flock before he could move. Well, welcome back. We need Zeus. Zeus. Zeus! Zeus is not cooperating today. Well, that worked, except I'm going the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. That includes my buddy Zeus, who is not here. <laughs> Zeus! That's it now. Let's go. Zeus! Why are they called setters? You'll find out. And he just left. Okay, now sit. 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 You're not gonna do that for me? Sit. sit, come on, sit. sit. Good boy, good boy, come on, come on. I know, that's not gonna get you anywhere. Come on. <laughs> Here, come on, let's go. Come on. Created by Russian scientists. That and so much more all coming up now on Animal Outtakes. <laughs> Did you see that? She walked right up. <laughs> coming up now when you were talking. <laughs> that was Auntie Michelle. She, 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 she. Are we ready? We're ready. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Oh yeah, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm peeing in my pants, but everything is perfect, mm -hmm. right? Hello and welcome to Animal Outtakes. I'm Marsha Panucci, and this is my trusted friend, Zeus. Well, its name actually means... <laughs> oh. He likes it on his oh, there bottoms he goes. of his feet. Look at this. Oh, there's comfort. Isn't that cool? <laughs> sit down. Sit, sit. Be the first animal that would come to your mind. Zeus! Yay! You finally did it! Yay! Whoa, that's a good one. <laughs>